Weddings are always a very special occasion. As creative embroiderers, we often like to make something special for the bride and groom. This machine embroidered hardanger ring bearer pillow can be made in just a few hours and will be treasured for generations, especially if you personalize it with the names of the bride and groom along with their special day. The embroidery designs for this pillow come from the hardanger collection by Lindy G Embroidery. This collection features 36 designs and you can combine them or you can take them apart. And that's what I've done here. I've used one design as is. This corner element was pulled out from another design and the border was built from an element that was pulled from yet another design. So these designs are great because they've been built on traditional designs and you can make your own new versions of hard anger. Hi, I'm Lindy Goodall from Lindy G Embroidery and today I'm going to show you how to embroider hard anger in the hoop. Hardanger is traditionally a handwork technique. We draw threads usually on linen or some even weave fabric and then they're hand stitched. This is very time consuming. I can tell you because I've done it by hand many years ago. Now I do it by machine and today it's more of a cut work feature. So what we're going to be doing is actually cutting through our fabric. In this area here you can see that I've got maybe a gold color back there. I've underlaid my fabric with some chiffon and I'm going to show you that in a minute. So here I have my fabric already hooped and ready for the embroidery. You can see how I've built my design. This may be a little clearer than looking at the pillow. And you can see these four elements. These will sew individually all the way through. This is the hard anger part where we're going to do the cut work. We're going to cut each one, then sew the next one, cut it, finish it, move to the next, and then we'll build the four corner pieces and finally the border. We want to do these one at a time so that we get maximum registration. It takes a little longer that way, but believe me, it's still way faster than doing it by hand. Now because it nearly maxes out my hoop, I need to get my, my fabric hooped pretty straight to start with. So I have hooped my uh, linen and I have starched this to a level of extra crispy. And I have two layers of wash away stabilizer. This is a fiber based stabilizer. It's going to hold up better than a film. Underneath that I have my chiffon. Now notice that I have a lot of extra fabric here. I need more fabric than is required for my pillow top to get in this hoop. So rather than to cut out a bigger square and then cut that down and, and waste fabric, I've just hooped my whole piece of fabric here. And I've wrapped around just strips of cutaway and pinned it to keep this fabric out of the way and I've also pinned my excess chiffon up here so that it doesn't slip underneath the hoop. So now we're ready to embroider. Let's go to the sewing machine. You can see by the uh, panel on the sewing machine that we have a lot of colors in this design but I'm only sewing it in one color. The extra colors are so the machine will stop because we're going to take the, machine, the hoop out and we're going to trim. And we're going to have to do this multiple times. So we want the machine to stop. We don't want to have to keep watching and stopping the machine manually. Okay, now I'm ready to take the hoop out and trim for the first time. So I'm ready to trim now and I know that I've used a color that's very close to my fabric color here, but you can probably see this. It went around twice, and I, this is a reinforcing stitch, and now I'm going to cut out everything that's on the inside here. So I'm going to use this surgical steel seam ripper, and I'm just going to make a little slice in my fabric. And I have this flat on my table, and I don't want to trim through the stabilizer. So this is just to get an opening for my scissors. So the next step is to start cutting. And I'm just going to trim. And I like to cut right up to the corners at an angle. It takes a little bit of time to get started here. Especially when you can't move the fabric because of the camera. So you're just going to start trimming right up to but not through that stitching line. If your scissors aren't really sharp, switch to a pair that is. And I'm trying to trim without turning the hoop so that you can see what I'm doing. 
And you can see that I'm trimming right up to that stitching line. And what's going to sew next is a zigzag and it's just going to kind of overcast that edge. So you want to trim right up to that. So it took me less than five minutes to cut that out and you can see where I've kind of brushed up some fibers here along the edge and I do that because the needle is probably going to run those off so you want to make sure that there are no little pokey fibers sticking out and you just want to trim those off as well. Now one thing you do want to avoid is picking it up putting your fingers behind here to hold the fabric up so you can make it easier to trim because once you distort the tension in your hoop your registration is going to be off. Before you put it back in the machine make sure that you have all of your little fibers and stuff off. Some canned air works really well for that and I'm ready to put it back in the machine. So I'm going to press start and the next thing will be the zigzag tack down. I have a stop programmed after that so that we can check and make sure that there are no fibers that we need to trim off. Obviously when you put your hoop back in the machine you want to make sure that all of the fabric is out of the way so you don't accidentally sew your hoop into the fabric. So I'm going to take my hoop out so you can get a close-up view and we can look and see if there's anything we need to trim. As the needle zigzags around the design it can sometimes pull off or push off these little fibers. You want to make sure that you trim these now because it's going to be really next to impossible to trim them once you have your final satin stitch around so them. So once you have it all trimmed, you're ready to put it back in the machine and finish sewing. And we're sewing the next color change in the same color. And what's happening now is we're building all those bars that build up inside the um, inside of the open area. And this is pretty much a freestanding lace technique because it's sewing directly on that water soluble stabilizer. Now the chiffon does help give it a little bit more stability. The reason I have the chiffon behind there is number one for a color accent but number two it will prevent the rings from falling inside the pillow which you wouldn't want during a wedding ceremony. So it adds a little elegant touch and it has a, a function. Now on traditional hard anger these would actually be drawn threads that were still in the, the fabric that would be wrapped with stitches. So we're cre recreating that look. Okay, our first element is done and now the process is repeating. So we're going to sew the outline, we'll pull out the hoop, and we'll trim just as we did before. So here you can see I'm ready to trim my next one. Notice that I have this gap here and that's because when I was cutting this to get so the camera could see what I was doing I really couldn't see what I was doing and I accidentally slashed clear through when I did that initial opening. So you want to be really careful when you use the blade that you just want to get just that top layer. Because I've used these elements in the from the other designs what I've done is I've pull all those together and I've combined them into a package. So if you just want to make the pillow, the full instructions and all the designs you need already built so that you don't even have to do them in your software are available on the website and they're in the project section and I'll put a link to it at the end of the video. So once again here's the finished pillow. Once I've completed the embroidery I've just bar tacked some ribbons on the front here and on the back I, I just have a traditional little lapped pillow but I've added this little band in here so when you have a little kid walking down the aisle holding the ring bearer's pillow he's got something to hold on to and it makes it easy for him to swing it around and not lose anything. So I hope you enjoy this quick little project it makes an excellent heirloom and it's not hard to make you can make it in a couple of hours and it's, it's a beautiful gift.